Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Back to the Future, the musical is on Broadway this summer. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. I'm at Citizen M Hotel, high above Back to the Future, talking to Roger Bart, who has taken on the iconic role of Doc Brown. Roger, good to see you. Nice to see you. Look at you back on Broadway in another big musical, big yeah. Broadway musical. Yeah. How does it feel to be at, at the Winter Garden, which yeah. is like the, the prime palace of Broadway? How's Amazing. it feeling? How's life? It, it, it's, it, life is fantastic, you know, and, and I, uh, I love being back here. I love being back in New York. I had the great privilege of playing in, in the West End for yeah. the last couple of years. And to be back here, and it feels like at the right time, I feel like people really sort of been going to the theater and getting more excited about going to the theater, more the safe feeling about it, more, more uh, excited about coming to New York and spending a weekend here with their family. So I think this show is the, is the right show at the right time um, for, for uh, theater lovers. I saw it last night, loved it. Fantastic, okay. had a great time. But what I loved about it was how many people, regular people, you could just tell it was one of those shows that when families heard that this was coming to Broadway, it was like, we're, we're getting tickets to that. There's just certain titles that people get really excited about. Yeah, it, 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 you know, Back to the Future, as I, I became more and more familiar with it over these years working on it, I underestimated its um, huge appeal and it's the way it's, uh, it is as famous as uh, if we were to do a Star Wars musical or E.T. Sure. the musical, and most Spielberg giant ventures. It's of that epic, epic size, you know, so uh, uh, it is not an, an unusual night for me to, um, to look out in the audience and see three people dressed as Doc Brown with, with, uh, with ridiculous wigs. You know, I've heard many times that the guy, a, a typical fella somewhere will say, uh, you know, I don't really like musicals, but that one I actually am kind of curious about. And I, I love yeah. that we're part of that. But Back to the Future has a great human story under it all. It does. I mean, it, it is sort of based in sci-fi and time travel and all these sort of big ideas, but it actually is just a beautiful human story about family and friendship yep. and love and yeah. it's just lovely. It, it, it really is. It's The show is, is it kind of constructed, like a, it bookended and, and interspersed with um, a lot of uh, uh, very cool technology. Yeah, um, that is very cool. State of the way. art, I mean, yes. really, really very cool. Um, and in the middle of it is an old-fashioned uh, 1955 story. And of course, what's interesting for us is that, you know, uh, Marty and I uh, have this uh, motor of, uh, we only have a, this amount of time yeah. and it's life or death. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're, we're, we're around a world that has no idea. They're just sort of a day in the life in 1955 of a, of a kid who's obsessed with a girl and I, I would love nothing more than to spend the rest of his life with her. There, there are many things about it that I found so beautiful. For instance, there's a moment in the show where I think that, that Marty is sitting down with his dad in the cafeteria and he's, he's kind of dealing with him for the first time. It's, it's a, he's looking at him not as his dad or his dad and his peer. And he says to him something like, um, he, he says, you know, what are you doing, George? He says, well, I'm, I'm writing this uh, sci-fi story. And the son goes, uh, and Marty goes, uh, wow, I, I had no idea you were creative. Mm. To me, I think that's like, you know, my old man had a clarinet in the house, and I, I was like, what is this clarinet doing here? Yeah. And I come to find out later that my dad played the clarinet. Didn't know. Mm -hmm. Just didn't know he had that side of him. Yeah. So there's something very beautiful about a kid kind of, you know, getting to know his, his parents as, as young people who were similarly awkward and maybe feeling displaced the same way he was and um, changing their lives forever when he comes back. There's a lot of Wizard of the Oz uh, feeling in this show too, yeah, as you know. Absolutely. You, know you, you get spun around and something crazy stuff happens, then you come back and all you want to do is go back home. Yeah. Even if it was a little rough at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it really works because the movie, when you think back, so many of the performances were so big and theatrical, like Crispin yeah. Glover and uh, Christopher Lloyd, yeah. obviously, is Doc Brown. You're not tasked with giving us Christopher Lloyd. Right. But I feel like I got to see such a beautiful, different characterization yeah. of, of this sort of mad scientist uh, yeah. guy that we all loved in the 80s. The only thing that I tried to adhere to, which was the great um, leg up from Christopher Lloyd, was Chris has that kind of unique ability to be able to be both uh, charming and also make an audience feel like anything can happen. He's, mm. He could do anything to surprise you. He's going to do something crazy, and those are things that I uh, love. You know, I love I love to 
be both um, a, a little subversive on stage with the audience um, and also um, create a feeling of, uh, of, of controlled chaos. Christopher Lloyd has been around, wasn't he, in the rehearsal room not yeah. long ago? Yeah, yeah, he came, popped in. He's awesome. And he, he also came to Manchester years ago when they announced my um, being involved in it. And, and he was hilarious. You know, we didn't, we didn't talk about the show at all. He's, an, you know, he's an old thespian. So we just talked about the stuff that he did. And he's very cool. And, but the funniest moment was really when he, um, is really when I, we were sitting in the room, they were about to announce me. And he goes, he didn't seem to know it was a musical or he was just being Chris. He was just like, wait a minute. They're doing this thing as a musical. I said, yeah. He goes, so Doc's going to sing. I said, yeah. He goes, gosh, I look forward to hearing that, is what he said. It was just so <laughs> cute, you know. It made me laugh. I was like, oh, man. You know, so, uh, but, but he has dropped in on occasion, um, and he's always been very supportive. He loves Back to the Future, and he loves Bob Gale. Yeah. Loves to be Doc Brown. Yeah. The audiences lose their minds at this show. This is like one of the most enthusiastic audiences I've seen in years. I mean, yeah, it's, really, they're it's, ready for this. And it, I feel yeah. like you're the ringmaster to sort of keep this party going. Uh, this is probably the closest thing to, to being in, in Rocky Horror that I'll ever sure. get in a weird way because they do, they do know where the key story moments are and they are behind it in a way that is not um, obligatory or perfunctory. It's more that they really are involved. They really do organically yeah. get excited when 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 George finally takes Biff out. Yeah. We had a really interesting moment in the development of the show where we had written the first song that I sing called It Works about the car, the DeLorean. And um, it was given to me and I kind of thought, we need background vocals, man. We need we need people to kind of bop behind me, you know? And we were like, well where where are they where are they going to come from at right. 1.15 in the morning in a mall parking lot, you know? So I, so I threw out a couple of ideas that were unseemly um, about where the, who they could be. Um, and then they were like, no, oh, they should just be really kind of, you know, hot girls in DeLorean outfits. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So, so if they're going to emerge out of nowhere, then I have the opportunity. I said, well, we should just throw in the line of, you know, where they come from. Is I, I don't know. They, they just show up whenever yeah. I start singing. When, when we introduce that, um, that oh, that key element to the audience. I think it kind of made it, it made the show self-aware mm -hmm. in a way. It put a lot of them like, oh, <laughs> they they know it's silly too. Like we all accept that it's yeah. this is a silly convention. Yeah. And then we ran with it. Matter of fact, I sing a really sweet ballad at one point, and I begged John Rando to have just a group show up at my door singing ooze and just saying, please, really, I just stop it. Just leave me alone. <laughs> Nobody said you can't yeah. do it. But I wanted them everywhere. As soon as yeah. I start singing anything, yeah. you know, just show up. So it's really fun. Let's hear it for the dreamers Who never stop believing One grain of sand becomes a pearl A great idea can change the world They can see what others don't Try things others won't so this one's for the dreamers. You do get a sweet ballad. I mean, you kind of really get to do it all. It, it, yeah. It was, you know what I, I mean? I you do, feel, I yeah. do. It's, it, I sing that for, uh, uh, that's, that, that song uh, runs very uh, deep for me. I've, I've uh, uh, have, uh, you know, anybody uh, uh, my age um, the, who has walked in the parade of life uh, has certainly watched it thin as you look around, you know, and, um, and there are many of those uh, in my life that I was very close to uh, that, um, that I've lost and, and the world lost, um, and uh, all of whom um, had very big dreams and, um, and to some degree or another saw them th uh, through or didn't. You know, we all just try to uh, get on with it and, and um, um, have fun and, and um, live uh, to, to our, uh, and, and uh, dream our, our biggest adventures can, can trump, come true and so I, I'm sure I'm, I'm having a hard time speaking now because it's uh, very some of it is very painful for me still so as it is every night so this one's for the dreamers like me you know you have 35 years of Broadway under your belt yeah yeah 87 I, I showed up so when you look at someone like Casey likes 
who, yeah. who's playing Marty, who's fantastic, yeah. who is fantastic Great. and almost famous as well. He's, yeah. like, he's having a, a nice little career. Is it fun to, to play with someone who you see at the start of their career? Yeah. And, and to be that guy now? It is. I do love that that there is some degree of a, a mentoring in in yeah. um, on stage and in life with with Casey and with you know you know so showing him some some stuff on stage and uh, and also um, that it's in the show too as well that, that we I mentor him and and in many ways I don't mentor him we're just we're just friends yeah you know what I mean it's yeah. like it's a great thing when you meet somebody in um, in your town growing up and it's like I know you and you I bet you know me and we're we're kindred spirits even though we're just couldn't be more different you know.